Hey you, welcome to The Art of Code. This is part two of the Universe Within tutorial series. And what, you, you haven't watched part one yet? Oh, well, in that case, just go watch it real quick. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay, I'll wait. Go. Oh, hey, you're back. Great. Let's get started. So this is where we left off last time, and if you remember, um, especially if I make these these uh, glowing dots a little bit larger, uh, you will see that we had some some artifacts here on the cell boundaries, and the way to fix that is to just put a fract around here. So fract p around the position, and that will fix that for you. Um, so yeah, so one one last thing that I wanted to add here before we move on is um, I I want these these lines to to flash when they're a certain length so that we get um, we get little flashes on on line segments uh, like as if they're I don't know neurons talking to each other or whatnot. So for that I'm just going to go back to the line function over here and. Uh, so just a quick refresher here, we get the distance to the line segment and here we cut out the actual thickness of the line and then here we uh, uh, we make sure that not all lines are visible, that they're only visible when they're a certain length and they fade in and out. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add, I'm going to multiply this, um, uh, no not multiply, I'm going to add here. Um, another smooth step that will just flash when a, when the line is a certain length it will it will add some extra so that um, so that it will come brighter and so for that I'm going to just do this um, and I'm going to take the absolute value of uh, this this distance again and I and because we need this distance twice we might as well just put it in a variable so I'm going to do float d2 equals that variable D2 because D is already used over here. Um, and then I'm going to do D2 minus 0.75. Um, let's see what that does. So this, you can't really see it yet. Uh, let me just multiply this a bit smaller. So, so yeah, so now you can see that there's like little flashes going on when, when the distance is around 0.75 between the two points. So, so that's why I put an absolute around here. So basically this, uh, if D2 is 0.75, then this will be zero. Um, and then it will, uh, this entire thing will return one. If it moves away from 0.75, then, then the absolute will, will become larger than zero. And if it becomes larger than 0 0.05, then it will be zero. I hope that made sense. So basically, just just adds a little a little flash if you can see. I mean, it's a subtle effect, but yeah, like so there and here and there and there and there. All right. Uh, so now we're gonna take this entire thing and put it in its own function. So for that, I'm just gonna take from here to here, cut that out and make a function over here. I'm going to call that layer, layer, and I'm going to stick a UV in that as an input. And as an output, it's going to give me that flow at the M value over here. So return M. And then over here, I have to not forget to add that M value. So M equals zero over here. And then down here, I can just say M equals layer and then UV times 5. That should not change anything, so let's see. Okay, so that compiled and it didn't change anything. Great. So now, let me just put this back to 0. So now I'm gonna draw a few of these layers uh, on top of each other with different sizes to kind of uh, make it look 3D. So for that I'm gonna make a loop. So I'm gonna do 4i equals 0 and I'm i smaller than or equals 1, i uh, plus equals 1 over 4. And so what that will do is it will start i off at 0 
and it will continue until it's one and it will go one fourth of a step each time. And the reason why I put it like this is because here it's easy to see. So this kind of evaluates the 0.25. Um, uh, but if I write it like this, I can easily see how many layers I have. So I have four in this case. All right, so then inside of here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to draw layers at different sizes, first of all. And for the sizes, I, I need a depth value. So let me make a depth value. Float Z equals fract I plus T. So let me, I'm, I'm gonna move these layers so they're gonna be uh, a function of time, so I time. And basically what this does is, um, it, it, like it makes it that that each time it gets through here, this I value is going to be slightly different and the T value is going to increase anyways, right? Because the, the T value is basically this value over here. And so what it does is it, it will move that value forward and the fract will make it so that if it gets past one, it snaps back to or, uh, it snaps back to zero. So now we're going to get multiple layers. And as soon as a layer hits one, it goes back to zero behind the other layer. And then the other layer goes behind and the other layer goes behind. And that's, that's how we can reuse layers. All right, so now I can make my size dependent a function of this Z value. So I'm going to, I can say, okay, make my size um, uh, let's say if my z equals 0, uh, then my size equals 10. And a larger number here means a smaller uh, means a smaller layer. Basically, this number tells you the number of repetitions that you have. Uh, so larger repetitions means a smaller, uh, a smaller look. Um, yeah, so this will make it that if my z is 0, then I have a small layer in the distance. And then if my z is 1, I have a large layer in the, in the front. So let's see what this does. So I'm going to do m plus equals, because each time we're going to add another layer, plus equals layer uv times size. Um, OK, I need to obviously declare my identifier over here. OK, so now I have some psychedelic looking thing going on which is great it goes a little bit fast so i'm going to make it slower so multiply by 0.1 and the first thing i'm going to do is uh because obviously now every layer is because we're looking at the same part of each layer so every layer looks the same and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to offset that so i could just add i over here uh, then you do get some offset but the offset only goes from zero to one which is uh, not very much so I am going to multiply it by some larger number, let's say 20. So now each layer has, uh, we're looking at, at a completely different part of each layer. That's why it looks different. All right, so the next part is, um, let me actually do this to have one layer less so we can see a little bit better. Uh, the next thing is that you can see that those layers are popping in and out of existence, which is not very pretty. So for that, I'm going to make it that those layers fade in and fade out. And for fading in and fading out, I'll just multiply it by this fade value that is going to be zero at the end and at the beginning of, um, of, my, of my Z value. So where Z is close to one, it's going to be zero. Where Z is close to zero, it's going to be zero. Uh, so for that, I will use uh, another smooth step. And, I, and I'm going to say, OK, from 0 to 0 0.2 uh, fade in. So let's see if that works. So if I multiply this by fade, and let's see in the distance. So in the distance, now they, they don't pop anymore. They just fade in. Uh, they fade in a little bit fast. So I, I want them to fade in over the first whole 50% of their movement. So I'm going to do times 0.5 over here. So now they fade in a little bit slower. And I'm going to do the same for the fade out. So I'm going to do S. The only thing is for the fade out, I'm going to make it a little bit faster. Only the last 20% is going to fade out. So basically, uh, here the variables are turned around because here we're going from 1 to 0 as opposed to here where we're going from 0 to 1. That's why these uh, values are turned around. So let's see. So now the ones in the front also fade out. So you can see it. Yeah, there, one faded out and over here. All right, great. So now the next thing is to add a little bit of a twist to this whole thing. So for that, I'm going to uh, rotate the UVs. And uh, if we're rotating anything, or uh, a sine and a cosine is going to be involved. So I'm going to go here, 
make my float s equals the sine of t and float c equals the cosine of t and now i'm going to make a rotation matrix mat two ah rot equals mat two and then i'm gonna go c comma minus s comma s comma c um, and now I can multiply my UVs by that rotation matrix to, ro to rotate my, my, my screen. So let's see. So now we have a nice slow rotation going on. Awesome. All right. So the next thing I had is um, in the original effect, I had it that you can use the mouse to, to move the camera a little bit. So let's add that. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do effect to mouse equals i mouse dot x y divided by i resolution dot x y. And what that will do is it will make it that if my mouse is in the lower left corner, it's going to be zero. If it's in the top right corner, it's going to be one comma one. Um, but I want it to be that the zero zero is when the mouse is in the middle. So I'm just going to subtract 0.5 from that. So now I could just add this here. Let's see what that does. So add this mouse over here. So now if I move left, right, it moves up, down. And so it's all kind of screwed up now. And that is because I need to also rotate my mouse because my UVs are rotated. So if, if I want this to be consistent, then my mouse also needs to be rotated. So I'm going to go here, mouse times equals rot. And let's see. And so now it goes exactly opposite of what I want. So for all for that, I can just uh, over here, just subtract this mouse instead of adding it. And so now it moves around. It gives like some nice parallax 3D effect. Great. All right, so uh, the next thing, we want to add some color to this thing. So for that, I'm gonna make over here, I'm gonna make a base color first. So Vec3 base equals and then the way i'm going to do this i'm going to because i want to cycle through different colors so the way i'm going to do this is i'm, I'm just going to um, make three sine waves that all that all go at slightly different speeds so so that over the course of of time like they they get all different combinations of rg and b so for that i'm going to use sine and then t times um, some vector three that has three different speeds in it. So uh, let's say and or something like this. Okay. So now this basically what this does is um, because I multiply my float, right? T is a float. Uh, because I multiply that by some vector three, that basically makes a vector three. That's basically the same as saying as saying you know this this times t plus that one times t plus that one times t. And then the sign, uh, so if this sign gets an, a vector three as an input, it will just generate three signs. So when these signs goes, go from plus one to minus one, um, I don't want that. Um, uh, so normally what I would do to get them in the zero one range is this, right? So I multiply by 0 0.5. So now it goes from plus 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.5. And now I add 0 0.5, shift the whole thing up. So now it goes from zero uh, to uh, like from zero to one. Um, but maybe I don't want that because it gets too dark. So what I can do is shift it up even a little bit more. So let's say shift it up by 0 0.6. And now I, I have to account for that over here. So that, so now it kind of oscillates around 0 0.6 and it never gets uh, lower than 0.1. All right, so that's my base color. And now if I just multiply my base color by my M, I should get something interesting. So uh, times base. And now I have beautiful colors. Look at that. So this now, now it goes maybe a little bit slow, like the cycling here, because we're, we're doing a tenth of time, right? So it, I, I can... I could just multiply this over here by some larger number to, to make that cycling go faster. Um, all right, so another thing that I added is I added a little bit of gradient uh, from the top to the bottom. So for that, 
<clears throat> I could just do call, uh, let's see what happens here, call plus equals uv dot y. So my uv goes from plus 0.5 to minus 0.5. So, um, and well, if I just do this, then I just get a, um, a solid gradient. Uh, and also that gradient right now, it rotates with the, with the effect, which is maybe nice. Maybe you want to keep it that way. Originally, I didn't have it that way. So originally I had it that it didn't rotate. So what I just did, I can go over here before I rotate my UVs, I could, I could go gradient equals UV dot Y. And then I could just use that gradient over here so that it doesn't rotate. So it just stays. And I had the gradient on the bottom, so I could just subtract that. Um, and then I didn't have it white, I had it a, a version of the base color. So I could just do times base to get that. Um, all right, the last thing here is that I had this, uh, that it is, that it reacts to the music. And the way to do that, well, first of all, to add music, you can click on one of these eye channels over here, and then there's a SoundCloud um, option over here. And if you click on that, you can add the URL for a track. So let me just find the URL for the track that I used here um, and copy paste that. So basically, you just go to SoundCloud and wherever you have like a, a nice piece of music that you want to use, you just copy the URL and paste it in here. So let's add that um, okay no that didn't work hang on okay I have to press I have to press enter all right so there we go um, let me stop that for a second and now let me go over here uh, I gotta find it in my original um, yeah, over here. All right, so now I go over here. And so basically what this does here is it, 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 it fetches, uh, so this kind of comes in as a texture, the, the sound kind of comes in as a texture. And uh, here I say, okay, read from my channel one and then read at this particular location. And the location just tells you the, the um, uh, the frequency response so different locations respond to different frequencies um, and then you also have um, I believe this texture is 512 long and only two pixels high and the first pixel is actually I'm not entirely sure uh, but it's different frequencies and but the first row of pixels responds to something else in the second row uh, but you can you can play around with it and, and, and try to figure it out um, so then, then what I did over here is just, um, let me actually turn on something here. Uh, let me see if I can hear this. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so now here, what I did is just, uh, multiply my gradient by my, by that FFT value. So times equals FFT. See what that does. So now it disappears because it responds to the low frequencies that are not in that are not in here yet. So there you go. So now we have the low frequencies, and you see that it's that it's uh, flashing over here. So you can you could multiply this by some larger number to make it more pronounced if you want. Um, and there we go. So that's basically the whole effect. Um, I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a like, maybe even subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And either way, I will see you next time.